Mac and Mac here with you on Bird Street 65, and we've got our uh, guy from down south these days. Here in Philadelphia for years as an Eagle reporter. Still reports on the Eagles on his uh, own website, eaglesblitz.com. Tommy, Tommy Lawler jumps in with me on Bird Street 65. Uh, Tommy, I'm going to set the over-under rushing yards for DeAndre Swift at 174 and a half since he had 175 last week. You taking the under or the over? No, oh, over for sure, of course. <laughs> not, 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 not likely, my friend. I got some beachfront property in Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. Say <laughs> I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna put a, a more legitimate number. See how how we can go. I'm gonna I'm gonna say fifty. Give me over or under, Tommy. I'll say over that, but it, it won't be it, it won't be substantially over that because the Bucks have an outstanding run defense and uh, they're gonna even if they play a light box like Minnesota did last week with Vita Vea in the middle and some of the guys they have, they're just better run defenders. So yeah. even if they go light in the box, the Eagles aren't going to have the success they did last week. Your thoughts on Brian Johnson, Tommy, to date, because I, I was pretty impressed last week. The Eagles obviously came into the game with a, with a game plan and it wasn't working. And you mentioned those light boxes and, Minnesota wasn't coming out of them, and they said, all right, we're just going to run inside zone to the finish line, and they ran inside zone to the finish line. They won the football game. I think that's a check mark in his column. Seems like everybody's upset, though, with Brian Johnson uh, to this point. No, I, I mean, the point is something I wrote recently. If you go back to Super Bowl, I think it was Super Bowl thirty six, Bill mm-hmm. Belichick was facing Mike Martz and the Rams. And Belichick played a defense that dared Mike Marks to run, and because you know he had uh, he had Torrey Holt and he had all those receivers that were so explosive, Isaac Belichick Bruce, knew yeah. exactly. And Oz Hakeem and just on down the line, he didn't want any part of that passing offense getting going. So he played a light box. Well, Marshall Falk ran twenty one times in that game. The Rams ran twenty two. They threw forty four passes. So Mike Marks, despite having a light box, said. We're a passing team. We're going to throw it. And they'd scored 17 points and lost the Super Bowl. Yeah. Brian Johnson said, hey, listen, you're playing a live box. DeAndre Swift's going to be player of the week for the NFC. And he fed his guy. And don't don't force something. If, if they're giving you something, take it. Uh, yeah. You know, the Eagles off the line got to go knock the crap out of Vikings defenders. You know, Landon Dickerson and, and Jordan Mylotta were the two happiest people in Philadelphia last Thursday. They loved it. And then DeAndre Swift just kept running and running and running, and Minnesota couldn't stop him. Why would you stop him yourself? Make them stop him before you change it. So that's good coaching. Tommy, need your analysis on this, and it may sound like I'm harping on it because I am, because uh, <laughs> I may have bet on it in the game last Thursday night. I went Dallas Goddard yardage rather than catches. My mistake. Uh, six catches for 22 yards. John corrected my math earlier. It's less than four yards a catch. It's three and change. I said it was two and yards, two and change per yards. Uh, three and change, not good enough either. You get six catches, you're going to get more than 22 yards. He didn't. Is that on Goddard? Is that on Hertz? Or is that on the design of the play? Brian Johnson at all. Sirianni, uh, Kevin Petullo, put whoever you want into that mix. How do you have a six-catch, 22-yard day that Dallas Goddard had against the Vikings? You left out the defense, Jody. Uh, The Vikings, when they would drop back six, seven, eight guys, they said throw it, drop it off to somebody short. And when we dropped it off to somebody short, the Vikings were there to make the tackles. Goddard could not get going in space. There was always defenders right there on him. So give the Vikings credit. They they had an unusual scheme that they ran. They ran it very effectively. It, it affected the passing game in a big way. And, uh, you know, part of it is Jalen Hurts not feeling comfortable in the pocket and making good reads on a consistent basis. And so there might have been other plays where Goddard was open and, and, and Hurts just wasn't seeing him. But when he did get him the football, the Vikings rallied and make, made quick tackles. So the design of their defense worked in that part of the passing game. Yeah, I mentioned Brian Flores a couple times over the past week and a half, and and Jody knows I'm a big fan of, of Brian, and um, he does stuff. And the reason I like him is because I like I like 
uh, unique people. I don't like copycats. Like I don't like the Pangeo defense because everybody plays it. I don't want the copycat. I want the guy who's going to do things differently. The so-called, you know, zig when everybody else is acting. Now you got to be successful at it as well. But from the sure. Eagles' standpoint, I think you know they're not going to see what Minnesota did. Like he does some wacky stuff. I put he he leads the league in blitzes, and he also leads the league in eight man coverages, which is right weird beyond belief it's very weird yeah no perspective um so i think jalen's going to get more comfortable jason kelsey called it chaos this week they were throwing chaos at us and i do think it was a little bit unsure but i have some comfort that you're not going to see that every week so things are going to settle down and i think he's going to settle down or do you have more concern over jalen's early play I think your point is exactly right. So I think uh, Bill Belichick in the season opener did some creative things defensively. Flores did very creative things defensively. That was a highly unusual defense. And I think we're going to see more of that on, on Monday night with Todd Bowles. Again, another coach who can kind of do some unusual things. So this is this is good, right? You want Jalen Hurts to be tested. Uh, as much fun as it is to watch the Eagles drop back and just destroy people, uh, and trust me, 2022 was a lot of fun, right? But there's going to be games when you're going to run up against a good defense, and if you've been tested, you'll be ready for those games. And the Eagles, sometimes last year, with things being so easy, weren't always ready for those tests. So I think this is good for them to work through this to be better prepared for down the line uh, when they're going to face some, some defenses that are, that are good that may not be as uh, creative but are still going to make life tough on them. The Eagles need to be able to have answers uh, whether it's to run the football, to throw short, to throw left, or throw right, whatever they need to do, they'll be able to have more answers because they've been tested and they've had to be creative and and, and do some different things in these first couple of weeks. Uh, Jalen Hurts has got to get better. There's no question. But really, from week one to week two, because it was such a short week, they didn't have much of a chance to correct problems from week one. Now they've had an extended break. So I'm really curious to see how Hurts plays on Monday because the coaches have had time to study what they want to see improved, to look at the Bucks' defense, to, to fix the Eagles' offense. So Monday is going to give us a better barometer of where this offense is in my mind. Tommy, uh, through two games, the Eagles are plus four on the turnover ratio scale. Uh, they've come up with five uh, <laughs> takeaways, but uh, Jalen Hurts had an INT. So at plus four, they're tied for third best in the league. That's very good except for the Bucks being second, who have five turnovers and haven't turned it over once themselves. So they're plus five. Is this going to be a turnover-type game since both teams seem to be pretty good at getting them? Uh, the Bucks have not given one up yet. Uh, the Eagles have been a team that's always tried to be aggressive, uh, despite uh, Gannon being their head coach, decides been a little bit more aggressive. How much did the turnovers affect the outcome of the game on Sunday for your take? Well, if you look, the thing that both teams have in common is that Minnesota gave yeah, the football to both of them. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Three turnovers. They're by giving the away the football. <laughs> They're very generous of Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. Uh, three turnovers to, to Tampa in the opener and four to the Eagles in week two. Uh, so whoever Minnesota plays this week, I guess we'll be looking to get five. Um, and they should, that, by cool. the way, the Eagles should add five, but Contavia Street was offside, lined up oh, offside yeah, when yeah. And Mario talk about Goodrich a useless offside. The fumble. Yeah. Uh, and really, you know, uh, Jayla, excuse me, Darius Slay had a chance for a couple of interceptions. The yeah. they, the Eagles could have had even more. They could have had a wild six, seven inter, uh, takeaway game, but they they got four, which is still pretty darn good. Um, the Eagles have been very opportunistic on defense. So have the Bucks. Again, both both teams did well by playing Minnesota. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, the, the Vikings have done a better job protecting the football. They've also played a couple of defenses that aren't exactly compelling. Minnesota, we just saw <laughs> last week, is not exactly Chicago. Not exactly the 85 yeah. Bears. And speaking of the Bears, um, Oof. Oof. you know, I don't even know what to say about the Bears at this point. So <laughs> uh, that's a bit of a mystery right I, there. I don't like, you know. I'm sure Ryan Poles is a nice man, but I I would uh, and when I watch Jalen Carter play, 
And I say that team passed on him twice in essence because they could have taken him at number one overall. Mm -hmm. But I understand why they didn't take him at number one because of the off the field issues and all that stuff. But then they dropped down and they could have had him again, Tommy, and they were still afraid. And all of a sudden he, he, he lands in the lap of the Eagles and boy, he's been impressive. I, I, I'm concerned about the secondary as a whole, not the corners of the outside corners, obviously, but the secondary as a whole, but this pass rush and a lot of it is, by the way, Javon Hargrave is doing a tremendous job with San Francisco. People saw him play last night and the sure. Eagles got better. I'm, I'm going to say it right now. The Eagles got better than Javon Hargrave. That's how good Jalen Carter is. He is a stud. There's absolutely no question. And the, the pick looks right now looks like a phenomenal pick. And the Eagles are loaded up front. Teams are firing the ball out quickly. So we haven't seen a bunch of sacks. But you know, Kirk Cousins, go back and rewatch that game. He got knocked to the ground hard quite a bit. That's, that's every game for poor Kirk. Yeah, that's, but yeah, that's even Kirk. Worse. <laughs> yeah, even worse. Yeah. He's and, a tough uh, guy, man. I will so, give him that. Oh, absolutely. I'll listen. I'll never question his toughness. There's no question about that. Um, yeah, the Eagles The Eagles are punishing quarterbacks right now, even though they don't have a great sack total. They're getting some big shots on guys, <laughs> and uh, it's fun to watch. And, and the best part about it is, aside from uh, BG and, and Fletcher Cox, these are young guys, you know? Yeah. And this th this front, front seven is going to be good for a while because you're going to see guys like Nolan Smith start to get better. Carter's going to get better. We've already seen Davis get better from last year. Uh, you got backups like Tui. You know, he's going to get better. Milton Williams is playing good football. So there's a lot of bodies up there. And the Eagles, this front seven didn't go anywhere for, for a while. And it's not just one dude. It's a group that they've built. And uh, that's what gives you real hope this could become a, a really good defense in the next few years. And then, Tommy, there is linebacker, where they're using a guy who they picked up off the street had all off season to sign, couldn't find himself a job till into preseason and Eagles bring him in from camp and he's going to start his third consecutive game. Then they have a linebacker that they thought so highly of. They released him in preseason, cut him, no guaranteed money. See you later. Bye Nicholas Morrow. And then when need be, luckily he's still out there on the street. They re-sign him. They throw him into the starting lineup and they give him the green dot on his helmet. It's not exactly the same. The Eagles linebacker position isn't exactly the Eagles defensive line, as you just ran down. Good, deep, young. Eagles linebacker positions. Journeyman, questionable. <laughs> I got no idea what they're going to do for him this week. How uh, questionable should we be for the Eagle linebacker position right now? Well, I actually think thought Zach Cunningham played pretty well against the Vikings. Uh, he was a good run defender. So let me ask you a question. No, 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 Tommy, yeah, for sure. Like it's, 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 Go ahead. Um, John just said, shame on the Chicago Bears. How could they pass on uh, the best player in the draft? Not once, but twice. Should the rest of the league be saying that about Zach Cunningham? Shame on the How did no one sign Jack, uh, Zach yeah, Cunningham not, in July? Oh, my God. How did he last that long? Come on, he's well, Zach Cunningham. Like the, no, we're not going to make him out to be something he's not, but I, but it, 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 the Eagles asked him to come in, be a good tackler, be a good run defender. He did. Um, in the past game, if the ball's thrown in front of him, like there was a play that they threw a running back, uh, to a running back in the flat, Zach's four or five yards off him, close to the ball, tackled him very quickly. He's good in those situations where he got exposed, and we saw that more in the season opener than last week. When you have him against a tight end in space, it's it, it's yeah. over. The tight end is going to win, and right now that's a that's a weakness for the Eagles because Nick Morrow is not much better in that situation, and so teams that have the quarterback focuses on the tight end, gets good protection, and the tight end's able to to make a couple of moves, he's going to get open, and then it's a, a a case of can you limit the the gain that the tight end gets. So uh, while Zach Cunningham, like say, I, I think he's played well to a certain extent there's still a big hole in this game. And, and there's no question the Eagles, when you build your roster, you have to choose somewhere to be a weak spot. Obviously, they've chosen to put their fewest resources into linebacker. By the way, I, I, I want to give Sean Desai credit for that. Uh, you mentioned, Tommy, he didn't, he didn't put Zach Cunningham near TJ Hawkinson. And that was after week one 
where they struggled with Hunter Henry, I think that's a positive. We talked about a positive for Brian Johnson. I think that was a positive for um, Sean Desai. But I asked Damo this early. We had Paul Domowicz on. I'm going to ask you because I need somebody to make this make sense. Why is everybody obsessed with moving James Bradbury in the slot? I it, This is an all-pro outside cornerback. I, I, I can't move an all-pro outside cornerback in the slot because, oh, he's my best slot guy because Avante got hurt and Zach McPherson got hurt. You're weakening two positions. Make it make sense to me, Tommy. So apparently Tampa Bay in, in the past has always played Mike Evans outside. This year yeah. they've started to mix him into the slot some. Well, the Mike Evans is a big dude, right? Six yeah. foot five. If you put him against a traditional slot corner, five foot ten, he's going to have a huge size advantage. If you're going against Mike Evans out of the slot, then putting James Bradbury in there does make sense because you've all of a sudden got a six two corner with long arms to cover a guy who's six foot five. So the yeah, and I'm fine from a limited standpoint. And and, right. and last week, I think you might have seen him against Hawkinson if he didn't have the concussion. I'm fine with that. I'm talking. You know, when Kelsey comes in here later, glorified, you know, flex receiver. Yeah, okay. But full time, like he's playing Abate Maddox level of snaps in the slot. Yeah, the only reason you do that is if you feel that strongly about getting Josh Job onto the field at outside corner, because you're you're, you're saying to yourself with with Avante Maddox out. We don't like our backups in, in the slot very much. So let's move Bradbury in there. And we do like our backups on the outside better. So that, that's why you would do that. Um, Mario Goodrich obviously struggled in, in the in Thursday night's game. Uh, hopefully he'll be in a better situation this week, knowing he's going to play, being able to really prepare and get ready. Plus he's had got some snaps under his belt. He's, he's seen what it's like to be on the field in, in a real game. So we'll see if he's able to learn from that. But yeah, there may be something they like about it that they just haven't talked about uh, because you know how secretive Nick Sirianni loves to be. Yes, he doesn't I want do. anybody to know yes, anything, right? Yeah. Uh, so w- once the cat's out of the bag, Sirianni or Desai may open up a little bit and say, here's what we're thinking, here's what we're doing. But for now, it's it really is a projection to say that uh, if they won't want him in there, it's got to be for reason. It might be for the, the size matchup against Evans or guys like you're saying, Kelsey, bigger like tight ends that they want him to cover. Or it it could just be a matter that they feel that strongly about Josh Job on the outside. And, you know, he did some good things last week, so I can see where they like him, but he also did give up the long touchdown. All right, Tommy, I got a hypothetical question for it. And most people hate my hypothetical questions, including everybody here on the stream. Always kills me for my (laughs) hypothetical question. Uh, But sorry, I got to ask it. If Jake Elliott misses a 45-yard field goal, a.k.a. a very makeable one for Jake in this game against Tampa. Who's going to get the blame? Jake, the new holder, Howie Roseman for bringing in a new holder, a.k.a. a new punter. Where will the Eagle fan angst go if Jake Elliott makes misses a makeable field goal this week? Well, I know I'm going to put it all on Jody Mack for bringing it up ahead of time. What yeah. a jerk. Yeah. All right, fine. Everybody hates me. Hey, join the Ow. club. Uh, and they'll they'll crush I mean, me we'll, here on we'll the screen. About, you might as well talk be about one bad of them, karma. Tommy. What's up with you, man? <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm not here to serve karma. I'm Listen, here to. Uh, by the way, somebody ever, said right, is an important point. Somebody said we're talking about holders. They have a. Uh, we've been talking about holders all stinking week. Where you been? Uh, yeah, holding uh is a bigger thing than people realize, Tommy, because these kickers can be sensitive creatures uh and when something is is turned a different way i bring it up in the preseason jake missed one kick and i told jody ty zetner was the holder (laughs) and by the way i looked at it backwards and forwards it was a solid hold he missed the kick um so 46 yarder Why'd he miss the kick? He probably wasn't comfortable. He's used to sip us. Got a different guy. All of a sudden, eh, it might be an issue, but it's only an issue if you miss one. 
Right. Michael Clay did mention that uh, the Braden man <laughs> and, and, and uh, Jake Elliott work out some in the off season together. So they have a chemistry where they've kicked together, where, where man has done some holding for him. Now, obviously that's just going to some high school field or some park and kicking the ball a little bit. That's not the same thing as an NFL game with NFL guys no. rushing and the pressure of the situation, but still there is, there is something to be said for the fact that they do have a little bit of a chemistry and so there will be somewhat of a comfort level there. So I'm not overly concerned, but it's something to watch. No. By the way, I met Braden yesterday. I was shocked. He's a small guy. He's like Jake. He's like the punting version of Jake. You see these punters like Aaron Sipos is this big strapping big dude. dude. Yeah, big dude. He's really small. I was I was surprised. Uh, but anyway, um, it's a nice kid. Uh, I think he's going to be fine. I don't think it's going to be an issue. But this is Philadelphia. If he misses one kick, he's been the best kicker in the <laughs> NFL, not named Justin Tucker. And if he starts missing a kick right. here and there, oh, it's going to come up. Jody's right from that standpoint. No, but I'll be maligned. Absolutely. On the, the, you're on the stream because I brought up holding. Yeah, okay. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it, we'll, we'll see if it becomes an issue or not. And oh, by the way, you know whose punter I like? The giant punter kicked the snot out of the ball last night in Thursday night football. Uh, the 49ers defense kept the Giants punting altogether too often, but every time he had a kick, I thought Isn't he... not that he, Jamie Gillen or something? Uh, yeah. He, Gillen, didn't he yeah. just block a, block a punt uh, from his... Uh, yeah, so last I, year. Yeah. La, uh, yeah. yeah I, I go with block, punt. He boots the snot out of it. Uh, the uh, There's a there's a website uh, called Punt Analytics, and I to me, they're the gospel because they're the only ones paying attention to punters. And they say the best punters are A.J. Cole from uh, Las Vegas, Tommy Townsend, who was an all-pro, that makes sense, Kansas City. Johnny Hecker has been great forever. Uh, and Jake Camerata, who's Tampa Bay's punter. Uh, and, and J.C. Allen mentioned him yesterday. Too much punting talk, but I will say this. Was, is this just for the first two weeks? First two weeks. It's, yeah. Uh, Sipos was 29th and Ty Zetner was 32nd, who's punting for Cam Johnson, uh, who's injured in Houston. So that's who the Eagles had in camp, and now they're trying to get better with Braden Man. So that's good punting knowledge for you, Tommy. You didn't think you'd get that, did you? I did not. <laughs> Let's hope the Eagles see a lot of Tampa's punter on Monday night. That would be fantastic. Yeah. I hope he has well, another he's... good game for Tampa. Yeah, he's a good punter, evidently. Well, I just hope he's punting from the five yard line consistently. Tommy, <laughs> is this the week we see? Um, I'll say the Eagles' best defensive player last year. She was the best defensive player in the league. Got votes for a defensive player of the year. Hassan Reddick uh, playing with the club on his hand has not been as effective. Only he knows for sure how much is it, is it affecting his play. We know the results haven't shown up, the stats haven't shown up yet. Um, how long does this type of injury usually take? Is this the breakout week for Hassan Reddick? Because the Eagles need their uh, pot stirrer getting it going on the defensive line because they're getting great pressure in the middle, but it's not paying dividends on the edge. Is this the week that Hassan breaks through? Sure, why not? Let's go with that. He's, he's going to be facing a right tackle. It's a young guy, uh, doesn't have a ton of experience. So uh, the matchup's there. And Reddick has faced a lot of, He's got the attention of the offenses so far. There have been chip blocks, yeah. double teams. People have really said, we're not going to let Reddick beat us. And after last Thursday night, they may switch and say, forget it. Let's let not let Josh Sweat beat us. You know, yeah. Sweat was fantastic. Well, that's what drives me crazy, Tommy. Like, Minnesota has a bad offensive line, but they have good tackles. But Darisaw didn't play. So Josh Sweat got to play against uh, Udo, who was a disaster. Um, and Josh really took advantage of it. Uh, Reddick had to play against maybe the best right tackle in football, not named Lane Johnson, really good player, uh, Brian O'Neill. This week, Josh has got to go against Tristan Wirfs because they moved him over, and he's right. evidently playing well. So he's got a tough duty. And and as you mentioned, Hassan's playing a young kid um, who just – you know, move from guard to tackle this year. Um, so maybe, 
you know, he's got the lighter duty this week. So maybe it is rightful to expect a little bit more from him, a little bit less from, from Josh. You know, the opponents but, out there is what I'm trying to say as well. That's that's the beauty of the defense. If you have a, an offensive line, and there's always going to be a weak spot on every offensive line. So the Eagles have guys on the left side, the right side, and the middle. So wherever the weak spot is, they can beat that weak spot, get to the quarterback, pressure the quarterback, affect the quarterback. So last week it was Josh Sweat. Let's hope this week it's this on Reddick. That'd be awesome. All right, Tommy, you last know, dying question. To, dying to make a big play. <clears throat> I'm dying to get my last question in here. Um, I'm going to come up short of using the word fear because I fear that would get me crushed on the stream today. Uh, so instead, I'll use the word respect. What aspect of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do you respect most that the Eagles are going to have to have an answer for? And if they don't, then the game could be hanging in the balance in the 59th minute. Uh, I won't won't say Eagles fear anything about the Bucs, but what it, what should they be most respecting going into this game? The, the defense, because the defense is good against the run. We, we can see they're ranked second or third in the league, I think. Uh, and they've also got the ability to rush the passer, and they've got a solid back seven so they can cover and make plays in space. So there's not a lot of obvious weaknesses. Now, the Eagles have some dynamic offensive pieces. They've got some smart coaches, and they've had time to build up a good game plan. So I'm really curious to see how they choose to attack them. We know Tampa in 2021 was able to really shut down Jalen Hurts, but they yes. should have known more as a runner, right? And Hurts should be a better passer at this point. So uh, they're going to look at, at, see what Todd Bowles did in those 2021 20, games. But if you remember, there were some Eagles receivers running open in those games, and Jalen just wasn't at that point as a passer. He was able to find those receivers and get them to football. He's a much better passer now. So it'll be interesting to see if Tampa plays the same kind of scheme and says, we dare you to beat us as a passer. Or if they say, you know what, he's, he's a better player now. Let's let him run. We, we think we can handle his running. So it's going to be an interesting chess match between Todd Bowles and the Eagles offensive staff and then how Jalen Hurts is able to, uh, to, to make plays. All um, right. You I, went uh, right where I was taking you, Tommy. So well done. At Lawler NFL. Uh, make sure you follow Tommy on X, Twitter, whatever you like to call it these days, uh, eaglesblitz.com. Here are the numbers. They are not pretty from 2021-22 for Jalen Hurts. And in the regular season game, 12 of 26 for 115 yards. Touchdown, interception, 55.8 passer rating. I think that might have been his worst um, regular season start, at least since he became the full-time starter. And then in the playoff game, 23 of 43, 258, and a lot of that was garbage. Tampa Bay yeah. was destroying them. One touchdown, two interceptions, 60 passer rating. Obviously, he's evolved. What was the passer rating from the game before? 60. No, uh, the 55 previous point, 55.8. Hey, he's, he's trending he up, John. Went yeah. from 55 to 60. Yeah. Is it, is it, <laughs> is it, does Todd Bowles have his number? Because he, he came in with a really good game plan. It was basically, uh, you know, pin him in and pen him in sort of as a runner. Um, and he's got the linebackers to do it because Devin White, Levante, David can both run. Um, and then he was flushing him left, flushing him left, flushing him left. Now, Jalen spent a lot of time uh, last offseason trying to improve that part of his game, and he did. So is it going to be Evolution versus Todd Bowles? Uh, I'm, I'm going to take Jalen Hurts. Uh, with his physical talent, his work ethic, and his drive, uh, to me, the guy that – there's no question in 2021, Todd Bowles won that matchup, and it wasn't even close. Uh, this time around, I think Hertz is an evolved player. The Eagles have evolved as an offense that that Eagles offense didn't have AJ Brown on the field. Yeah. Um, so you know DeAndre Swift is a more dangerous runner than Miles Sanders. I think we all probably agree with that. So the the Eagles have a better core of players. They have a more more experienced quarterback and a coaching staff's also been together. This is year three for these guys. So I think they'll put together a good plan. Listen. The Eagles are not going to go score 38 points and have a wild game. Tampa Bay, I think, is too good defensively. But 
the Eagles should win this game and Jalen Hurts should be able to make enough plays to lead his team to the victory. And uh, uh, I don't think we'll see a quarterback rating in the 60s. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go over on the 60. 55, 60, 65. I'll go over, over. 65. Go That's over. how confident <laughs> I am in Jalen having a good game on Sunday. All right, Tommy, want to give us a score on the game? You want to take a poke on a score? Eagles uh, against the Bucks. 27-17 Eagles. Yes. Well, I kind of like that. I'm going to be in that same neighborhood, I would think, on Monday. Uh, Tommy, we always appreciate it when you do hop in. That's Eagles, I-G-D-L-E-S, Blitz.com. Uh, puts up three or four posts a week, insightful, both before and after the game and leading up to it. Tommy, appreciate you jumping in here today. We'll get you back in a couple weeks, big guy. Great to talk to you, fellas. Thanks, Tommy. My pleasure. Tommy Lawler, former Eagles beat guy, now doing it from afar, but he stays right on top of all the Eagles stuff that's coming down. Appreciate him jumping in here. All right, McMullen and McDonald, you know what we got to do? Come back. Put a bow on the show here on Birds 365.